Hello and welcome. Today's project is all about my history with health anxiety, what it was like for me to grow up from the age of 10 with health anxiety and then suffer from it deeply in my mid-20s, feeling lost, hopeless, uncertain, and I felt like I was going to die from my symptoms. So I want to talk about this whole journey with you in about a 10 minute video, so I hope I Hope I get the message across okay. My channel is all about the strategies to overcome anxiety, to live a better life. This is not a coping channel. So re-watch the podcasts I make. We re-watch the, uh, the videos, this video I make. And learn about the strategies, learn about the tools to overcome anxiety naturally without medications because I overcame anxiety, severe debilitating anxiety. GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder, without medications. And so that's my goal. Anxiety found me. Anxiety found me. I never went to high school or went, never through college did I ever think I was going to do this and live this spiritual lifestyle that I live now, this disciplined lifestyle that I now share with you guys. And so thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting my channel. And I hope this video speaks to your story. Now I wanna bring you back to the age of 10 when I first had a panic attack. I was sitting in the basement watching a film with my parents and I felt my I couldn't get enough oxygen. I felt these weird sensations and I ran upstairs bewildered and my parents came after me. And then they said, you know, Brad, you're overly excited. You know, it's an exciting movie. And to some degree, yeah, they were, they were right. But they didn't explain. They didn't know it was health anxiety. or They didn't know it was panic. They didn't know what, I was, what was going on internally with my hyperventilation and the rapid heart beating and things like that. They didn't know. And so they were using what they know, they, they knew to assist me but it still left me in this domain of uncertainty because I still didn't find the answers in that moment to why I was feeling this way. And so later in life, when those feelings came back, when those sensations came back, it triggered that past trauma traumatic event. Oh no, what if you know this uncertainty pops up, the sensations triggers those old emotions and feelings, and then throughout my life, I would have panic and not know what it was. Feeling like, well, this is something to do with my health. I'm not healthy. I'm, I'm going to die from these sensations. This is not right. I'm confused, bewildered. And the thing is, I was never taught. I, I live in Canada the, the, and you know, in, the, in, in America, in Canada, we're not taught how to handle the challenges life throws our way in school, right? And I was never taught how to, what is panic? What is anxiety? How do you handle the death of a loved one? How do you handle the, the chaos of, of life and the technology on the rise? And you know, what are the proper ways of eating to feel mentally at your best? All these different things. And now, which I'm so grateful for, we live in an age where you can watch this video and learn how to, how to overcome these challenges. What are the techniques and strategies to live a more spiritual and meaningful life? And I'm so grateful for, for now in this time to have th this content, but also I can't imagine the, the generation behind me growing up in high school with these smartphones. I can't imagine the growing up with these computers and all of these, the enhancement of, of, of like Netflix and these streaming services and having access to everything at your fingertips. And like I talk in my previous videos, I was addicted to pornography for since I was 15 up until my mid 20s. And I can't imagine growing up now with the pornography that's out there and the, the accessibility it has to us. And that addiction to por pornography, it enhanced my so so social anxiety and, and it, it 
it contended with the relationships I was starting to manifest in high school because I, I realized looking back that I was always avoiding situations that made me feel stressed or that was challenging. So talking to that girl was challenging. Why talk to that girl when I can just go home and be in my safe space, watch pornography, right? So my whole life I realized that I was always running away from challenges and I grew up in a very secure household where I could always lean on my parents for help. So I was very dependent on them for help. But before I get into that, I want to say that if you're interested in my pornography journey, why I quit porn, and it's been two and a half years now since I quit, I'm going to leave a link to a, a powerful, powerful podcast episode you will find interesting. So that's, I'm going to leave a link right above. So I was very dependent on my parents because I, was, I could always lean on them for, for safety. And ever since I left college, so the border of college, you know, you know, college is interesting because it creates a border of, you know, in, in this space, you have goals to, to pass your classes. So you have your, your goal oriented in college. So you have this structure and in within the structure, you feel like you're comfortable because, you know, I, I have these goals that I need to attain these classes that I need to pass. But, uh, you know, in that structure, I can, you know, live this freeing lifestyle of, you know, smoking weed and, you know, going out on dates and being free and, and, you know, doing drugs and whatever it is, you know, you're, that's how, how I lived. And then once that border lifts, you're out in the real world. And then once you get you once you're put out into the real world, you have to grow up quickly and because now you're in the job market. Now you have to have to challenge yourself to to the workplace. And once that border lifted and I was put out into the workplace, I was met with so much resistance. I wasn't mentally prepared. I was met with, what if I don't do a good job at work? What if I fail at doing my job and I embarrass myself? What if I show up late? And you know, once I started to meet with that resistance, I would just fall back and just stay at home because, you know, I I was able to. I was able to stay at home as, for as long as I I could. I was able to avoid any real responsibility. But then a year passed and then another year passed and then another year passed and all I was doing was being in a toxic relationship, I, relationships, many relationships, just, you know, after I left my ex, I was just going on these dating apps all the time and just focused all on, you know, going out on dates and relationship oriented and then not only that I was just hanging around my my toxic friends smoking weed watching movies playing video games it was just easy it was easy to just stay at home why go out there why go out and you know deal with those challenges when I could just sleep in and play video games and then Another year passed and then I felt my anxiety growing, my restlessness inside, this uneasiness grow and grow over time. And it was this anxiety of time was passing me by. You know, another year is gone. Another year is gone. I'm still at home. And then I go on social media and I see people succeeding in life. I see people getting that house, getting that wife or husband and, you know, just getting somewhere, getting the career of their dreams, moving somewhere, traveling. And then my anxiety was growing because I, I became resentful and bitter because I was at home and I became resentful and bitter that these people over on this social media space were 
doing something worthwhile and I felt like I wasn't doing anything worthwhile. I, I was becoming Captain Hook in Peter Pan, right? The crocodile in the water with the clock in its stomach is sneaking up on Captain Hook and that's time. Time, the threat of time lurking in the depths of the waters. And that was me in my life at that time in my mid-twenties. Time was lurking and chasing me and I was blind, running away like Captain Hook was always running away. And he was a tyrant, right? He was an evil guy. And Peter Pan was like, why would I want to grow up to be like Captain Hook? So I want to stay, remain king of the lost boys. Right? And it's like, yeah, why would you want to grow up to be like Captain Hook? And I was growing up to be like Captain Hook, right? I was becoming resentful, bitter, and running away from time, blinded by my own habits that were keeping me stuck, right? And so my anxiety got worse. I started to suffer more from health anxiety. I was just pushing myself more into this unknown domain, this uncertainty. And my anxiety grew, my health anxiety grew. I was uncertain. I, I met Maggie at this point and I was uncertain whether our relationship was going to work out because I was still living on Pleasure Island. I wasn't taking responsibility and you know, she's like the Wendy type, you know. Wendy looks at Peter Pan and is like, why would I want this 30 year old child? Right? Why would I want to be around this 30 year old child when I, I want to grow and, and have a family and, and have, live a responsible, meaningful life? And, and I realized that, you know, freedom doesn't come living on P Pleasure Island. We all fantasize about these people on Netflix, these people in these movies who are living these reckless freedom, freedom lifestyles. There's no freedom in that. There's only, it, it leads to more drama. It leads to more uncertainty. It leads to more chaos. And so when I started to recover from my anxiety, the discipline and the, the, the facing of the challenges I needed to face made me more into a confident person with more self-respect. And that came with a lot more freedom. I became stronger mentally and physically. And I was able to handle the different challenges at work a lot better. I was able to go out into the world and confront the things I didn't want to confront. And that is freedom. Freedom is that. You're able to, you know, I believe in myself, like if I'm able to overcome this severe anxiety disorder, I can overcome anything. And so once I started to challenge myself and discipline myself to meditation, exercise, eating properly, um, having a routine, sleeping at the same time and waking at the same time each and every day, creating a schedule, meditating, which I've already said, meditating at the same time, journaling, things like that. Having that discipline set, set me up for the challenges life was inevitably going to throw my way. So throughout my mid-twenties, I was suffering from severe health anxiety. I started to avoid situations that made me feel uneasy. And then I suffered from agoraphobia because I kept avoiding these situations. I started to have panic attacks when I would go out to the, uh, the art gallery and that I would start to have panic attacks going out to the symphony with Maggie. And then these panic attacks would make me avoid situations and then the more I would avoid these situations, the more I would stay at home. And I, then I was so sensitive to the outside world, I, was, I wasn't able to even step out of my house without feeling anxiety. So every day I was suffering from panic attacks. Every day I was suffering from those hundreds of different anxiety symptoms, the body pains, the zaps, the hyperventilation, rapid heart breathing, the dizziness, lightheadedness, depersonalization, derealization, the, the confusion, the, 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 the waking up, it, uh, the hallucinations as well, waking up with, uh, in a sweat in the middle of the night. 
all of these different sensations I was suffering from each and every day. And so it was through that realization that, oh my God, my whole life up until this point, you know, I've been so dependent on my parents and I've been avoiding challenges and I've been dependent on alcohol, weed, sex, pornography, um, for filling up those gaps, those holes within me, filling up it's I would even say they would be like band-aids. They would be band-aids over the things that I feared. So, you know, why go and do that thing that makes me uncomfortable when I could go and just watch Netflix and eat junk food, right? And that's, and I feel like the generation now behind me is growing up in that way, is growing up too comfortable. I grew up too comfortable and when I, when I finally graduated from college, I immediately just was like, I want to avoid all this stuff, this adult responsibility in the world and just stay in this space of, you know, comfortability. Just don't want, it's going to be comfortable. But within that comfortability became more anxiety. I was at home in my safe zone, but in my mind, I was lonely. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling like I wasn't living up to what I could be. I was feeling like I was weak because I was so impulsive with these impulsive habits. And I felt guilty because I had a, a lot of baggage behind me. I said a, a lot of stupid things in my past. I did a lot of stupid things in my past. I had a lot of traumatic experiences in my past dealing with panic and anxiety. We all have that trauma. We all have that baggage. So it's important to ask yourself, what are you going to do? What am I going to do with this baggage? What am I going to do today that's going to prove my older self wrong? What am I going to do that today that's a challenge? I woke up today like every other day and I wrote in a journal for 10 minutes. I meditated. I did some stretching. I was planning this video and now I'm shooting this video with you guys. That's my discipline. That's my routine. And I know that whenever a challenge comes my way, that's an opportunity for me to be stronger than I was. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's video. I hope this video has connected with you in some way with your story. What is your story? Leave your comment below. I want to read your story. Leave a like, subscribe and follow. Go back, watch my other videos and write notes, learn, grow, sit down, listen to the Anxiety Project podcast, grow from that. And lastly, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next video or podcast. Bye for now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell so that whenever a new video of mine appears, you will be one of the first to know. Namaste.